All right, everybody, welcome back. On our channel, you've known we've talked about the Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan, LeBron James. We do discuss basketball here. Check our recent polls. We're even talking about who would you want in the last second shot. Larry Bird was the winner of that tournament. Thank you for everyone who voted. Now, I've said many times, 72 and 10 Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan team. Who are the 10 people they lost to? And I keep going, hey, I got to make a video on that. I got to make... Today's the day. I finally got down to it, and man, am I surprised and excited with some of the information I dug up looking back at this past. Now, I lived through it. I was there, you know, teenager. That's what I was right into, basketball, and I remember watching each night going to ESPN to see what happened with the Bulls that day. And I remember every once in a while, you'd be like a loss, and you'd be shocked, like, what the heck? But it didn't start out like the Warriors when they got in their hot streak. What was it, 24-0? We talked about that on a, on a great sports recently. So let's get right to it. We don't need any introduction or anything else. The 95-96, 72 win, 10 loss Chicago Bull team. Let's go over some stats. They broke the LA Lakers' previous 69-13 record with a, eight, a .841 win percentage. The Bulls, 8.78. That's outstanding. Mind-boggling. I would have never thought in these days you would see a team. I know we got to 73 and 9. Put a little dot into that. Remember that 73 and 9. We are going to talk about that later. How that's a huge impact on one of the losses in this game, in their season. So 72 and 10. This is what's funny. They were expected to be 70 and 12. So they were expected to break the Lakers record already. But remember, Jordan had just come back. The year before, half you know, played what 17 to less than 20 games regular season. They lost in the playoffs to the eventual Eastern Conference champions, Orlando Magic. And they started out five and oh. So we knew, hey, going to the season, it's back, it's on, a full off season. Rodman's there. The, the the Bulls are ready to rock and roll. They are a superstar team, all eyes on them. So they were expected to be 70 12. Their points per game, when you look at it, 105. The 80s, right? We'd come off the 80s where it was much higher than that. You would see games, you know, I, the averages. You would see like, oh, 131 to 121, things like that. You didn't see that in this era. And it wasn't because offense got bad. It's because defenses got tougher, especially the New York Knicks, teams like that where it was like, you know what? We're going to wear you down. We can't beat you up as bad as they used to in the 80s, but we're still going to beat you up. Their best thing is throw some thugs, throw some, some guys who can take you down and try to lower the score, right? It's easier. If they score less, then you don't have to score as much, and that's what it was in the 90s. So we get to it. Points per game, 105. That was first in the league. 29 teams, by the way, in the league at that time. Opponents' points per game against them was 92.9, so basically 93 points a game. So they won by a margin of 100 or by 13. Very impressive. So you're winning by 13 points per game, 72 wins, playoffs in the playoffs. We'll, we will cover that. They were 16 and three, swept through the first round. I think they beat the Heat in the first round. Second round, they went four and one. Third round, they went four and oh. I, I want to say they beat the Knicks was round two. They beat the Knicks four games to one. So interesting fact, the Knicks do beat them once in the regular season and once in the playoffs. So two losses from the Knicks upon the season. 4-0, they swept through the magic, man. Payback. Don't tell me that's what makes Jordan so dangerous is that, hey, you beat me once, man, I'm coming for you. And he came back and he said, you beat us, I'm sweeping your butts out of this playoffs, which they did. And then in the finals, they lost, or they won four games to two against the Sonics. Now, as far as winning streaks on the season, they had a winning streak of 13 and then a winning streak of 18. But that was it. Those were the only two winning streaks of 10 or more games. Every time they'd get to 7 or 8 or something like that, they would lose one. Now, points per game. Michael Jordan, of course, led the team in points with 30 points per game, 4 assists, and 6 rebounds. Great numbers. MVP numbers. The leader of the team. And as we go through these losses, you're going to see something that's in common. And it ain't Michael Jordan why they're losing. Scottie Pippen, 19 points per game, 5.9 assists, almost 6 assists with 6.4 rebounds. So Jordan's got him on rebounds and points. So we know who the leader is there. They need Pippen to win this championship, but we know who's the man on that team. Maybe that's why Scotty still has some hatred or uh, is a little upset that Jordan gets so much love as he should though. Kukoc, 13 points per game, three and a half rebounds and or assists and four rebounds. So we got other guys, Longley nine points, Steve Kerr eight points, Rodman only five points, but he did average. 14 rebounds per game. That's what we talked about in the past, how great Rodman was. Rodman could come in, 
He's not gonna take shots from Jordan or Pippen or Kerr or Kukoc. He's not a guy who's gonna say, hey, I need my touches. He's not like that. He comes in and says, I'm gonna grab you nearly 14.5. So nearly almost 15 rebounds a game, get you five. You know, I can score an easy bucket here and there if needed. So that is basically, there is no, when you look at this team and that's what's it, there might be teams in, in future times where, I mean, they only had three guys average double digits, Pippen, Kukoc, and Jordan. This wasn't a five-man starting team that was like what, like the Fab Five of Michigan or something. Where you're like, dude, these guys are all averaging 10 or more points a game with one leader, C. Webb or Juwan Howard, nothing like that. This was Jordan's the man, Pippen is his Robin, then give me someone else, sprinkle in some Ku coach, and then you got guys like Longley and Kerr who could have double-digit points. So that is it with the offense. So we know what happens. Let's get to these losses. I'm going to read you the teams they lost to. Magic. And I will tell you a couple of the surprises. Supersonics, the Pacers, the Nuggets. The Nuggets finished the season under 500. The Phoenix Suns, they finished the season 41 and 41 at 500. The Heat, the Knicks, the Raptors, one of the worst teams in basketball. The Hornets finished 500. And the Pacers. So let's get to the first one. They started out 5 0, coming out of the gates. Not bad, starting out 5 0, but nothing that was just like, oh my gosh, 24 0 to come out the gates. And their first loss was at the Orlando Magic, 94 to 88. Now remember, the Magic had beat them in the playoffs the year before. So this was significant. The thing is, there was no Shaq and no Rodman that game. I can't remember why. I, it was 96, I don't remember, 95. But neither of them were in the game. Jordan, team high, 23 points. Pippen, 17 points. Kukoc, 16. So their, their top three guys, they showed up. Now Jordan, maybe you'd like more, but it's, it's not on him. This team's got to put up more points. Penny Hardaway, member Penny, oh man, he was awesome. 36 points a game high, then Dennis Scott and Nick Anderson, both great three-point shooters, great as in regular, that NBA standard. Three-point shooters, each dropped 16, and that was it. The, the, after that, they went on to win a few more, and they started 10-2 and their first 12 games. All right, so that was the first one, the Magic. You look at that, and you're like, okay, I can see it. Eastern Conference champs, it's the first big game. No Shaq, so you think that would favor the, the Bulls big time, even without Rodman. Rodman can't be defensively or rebound as much, but you still got Longley. You still got, uh, what was it, Wennington? You still had some size, but they just did not get it done that game. Not as significant. As we go on, you'll see some of the games that are. All right, next up was the Seattle Supersonics. Of course, the eventual Western Conference champs. So the first two losses are some, okay, pretty good teams. Nothing bad. They lost 97 to 92. Jordan dropped 22, team high for him. Luke Longley, there we go, like I said. They don't need Rodman. Sometimes if, if Pippen or uh, Kukoc takes a, a night off, you had Longley 21. Pippen had 18. Now, the reason they lost is you had Gary Payton and Sean Kemp both dropping double-doubles getting 10, 10 assists for Peyton and getting uh, over 10 rebounds for Kemp, 26 for Peyton and 25 for Kemp. So those guys were, if you ever played NBA jams, those were the two guys on the team and they could get it done. Peyton, a great defender, a great, one of the best point guards of his era, if not in the history of the NBA. And then Sean Kemp was a good team leader. One of the few guys, you know, I always wish Sean Kemp would have won a dunk contest. I mean, he's, it, it just wasn't in the cards for him. He lost some to some, doinky, you know, idea dunks, the D Brown, the Cedric Sabalas. He kept saying he didn't want to be the Buffalo Bills, and I think he stopped at three. He didn't want to go four. So let's move on. They lost to the Sonics. Well-played game. The next one was the Pacers. At this point, the Bulls losing this game fall to 23-3. and three. The Indiana Pacers, when you look at these guys, they're not a bad, disrespectful team. They lost 103-97, to 97, so they lost by six. Rodman did play in that game. The other one, Rodman didn't play as well, so... He might have been out. Who knows? He could have been in Vegas. Michael Jordan, 30 points. Scottie Pippen put in 26. Not a bad performance. Both guys, Pippen and Jordan, had double-doubles. So it wasn't that they, they didn't get help from their main guys. The rest of the guys did not step up. For the Pacers, Rick Smits. Remember him? The Dutchman, Rick Smits. You know, going through this, it takes me back. And I love it. I love this, this time in the NBA. This time in the NBA... You know, I might know two guys per team, and it just feels like it's just so watered down. There's good players, but back then, I could tell you almost the top four from every team. It's not like that now. I don't know, something about these guys that you felt like because they were there most of the time, the teams were bigger impacts, and you got to know the teams. 
Now it feels like it's almost like the NBA is like a college where every few years someone else is off somewhere else. Unless you're a dynasty or a great team, you keep the core. Anyways, back to this. Rick Smith's Reggie Miller, Big Miller dropping 20 points. Did get a win over Jordan. I'm sure he loved that. Take that and hug it because he didn't get any titles. Mark Jackson, 13 points. And Mark Jackson had a double-double. Pacers, fun fact, on this season, the Pacers are the only team in the NBA to beat the Bulls twice in the regular season. In the regular season. Okay, we'll cover more who actually beat them three times throughout the year. But in the regular season, the only team was the Pacers. We'll get to more on them as we will hit up with them later. So you can see that, hey, sometimes the other team just has, has a good thing. In that game too. No, that's it. Let's move on. Now, this next one, this is one where you're like, how did this happen? Of all the things, how the heck did this happen? And it was to the Denver Nuggets. When we go over the roster and you hear it, you're, if you're from my era, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I remember him. And you're going to love it. And you'll say, yeah, I can see that happening. Maybe they drew, they got hot that game. You got to remember, every time the Bulls came to town, it was your Super Bowl. Even if you sucked. This, this is where the crowd was there. The energy was high. Remember, ESPN's fo I mean, ESPN follows everything, but they were hyping it up. So every time the Bulls went to that town, people wanted to go see them. They were going to be on prime time, and they were going to get all the attention for that night. So if you are a guy on the opposing team, you're like, dude, if I'm going to have a good game, it's going to be tonight. And that's what would happen on a lot of these. You're going to get these guys' great performances. So with the Nuggets, they win 105-99. to 99. The Bulls now fall to 41-4. and four. Still really good. You know, that's... That's still record breaking and they're on pace to break the record. But 41 and 4, the Nuggets, check this. 19 and 26. I mean, good night, dude. 19. They got 19 wins. They got 26 losses to the Bulls, four. And yet they still found a way. So there's some of these teams we'll read. There's multiple reasons why the Bulls lose. So let's see if this is one of them. The Nuggets in this one. Jordan. I believe this was a game high. Yeah. Game high, 39 points. MJ came. He said, no, no, no. We're not losing this crap. I bet you they were probably falling behind. And he said, we need to step up. And Jordan tried to carry him. Could not get it done. 39 points. This is why. This is why. And this is a trend in some of these losses. Winnington, 18 points. Not bad. Winnington had a double-double. So you're getting help from other guys. This is the reason. Pippen had 13. Okay. Pippen had 13. What did, it, what did he go? You know, six for eight? No. Pippen went four for 15. <laughs> Pippen, four for 15. His shooting percent was 26%. That's awful. He was looking on the stat sheet. He was the only one, only one to shoot under 30%, maybe even 40. That's, that's awful. So a lot of this loss falls on Pippen, but let's get to the Nuggets. Maha, what was it? Abdul Rahif or Abdul Rahf? 32 points. I forgot about that guy. He had a, a, a career, or not career high, a, a, a Nuggets high, 32 points. Antonio McDice and Ellis. Remember these guys? Mc, dude, I used to love McDice. He was so fun. He was fun to watch. He was he was like a Kevin Garnett before KG came out. But McDice was awesome. Ellis, they each had 16. So those guys balled out. You got R Rolf with 32, McDice and Ellis with 16 each. And Matumbo, five blocks. So maybe some of Pippen's misses were on blocks. Don't try to take it to Matumbo. But five blocks. And he had a double double doubled with 10 points and 17 boards. That's a big game for Matumbo, and that's what you needed. Matumbo didn't have to come out and score 30. You had he had other players. But that was that's a good roster where you look at that and you go, how are you 19 and 26? How is that? Now they all stepped their game up, but still, when you see Ellis, McDice, Roth, Matumbo, you're just like, how did you not? The Western Conference was good, but still, either way, a loss that probably shouldn't have happened, and I put a lot of that on. The Nuggets team playing outperforming and Pippen having a terrible shooting night. When you lose, what did they lose? They lost by six. Pippen, I mean, heck, maybe Pippen should have been looking for more assists. All right, let's move on to the next game. And this is another one where the Phoenix Suns, they finished the year 41 and 41. It was kind of the end of the Bar. Remember, Barkley had lost two years previously with the Suns to Jordan and then he retired. This was uh, Barkley's last year, I believe, last year there. The Suns beat him. Barkley came up and said, hey, you know what? This is my big game. Let's go. Let's roll. 106 to 96. So they win by 10. And this is the only time in the entire year, the entire year, that the Bulls lost two in a row. The only two in the regular season, 100%. They lost two in a row. And it was to two teams that are 500 or worse. Ugh. 
I mean, it happens. This is what makes college so crazy is why is it so hard for the best teams to win championships? Because everybody's at the height and you are the better team, but sometimes they can catch you slipping. You miss a few shots. You have a night like Pippen did. And then the other team rises up. I mean, if this was a, a one and done tournament, the Suns or the Nuggets are moving on and you're like, get out of here. The Bulls are way better. So the, the Suns beat them this night, 41 and five. The Suns are 21 and 24, not even 500. And like I said, the only back-to-back -back losses throughout the whole year. In that game, Jordan had 28 points and Pippen had 18. So that's it. I mean, nobody else really stepped up. And that's why when you look at this team, the, it, it, it's not a team, like I said, where you go, everyone has their part. I mean, they did have their part. You had Jordan as the, the general. You had Pippen as the first lieutenant. I'm not good with rankings. Who would that be? Colonel? Lieutenant Colonel? Um, and then you had everyone else kind of like, a bunch of you know guys who are supposed to do their job. Kerr, Longley, uh, Winnington, guys who need to step up when they're needed. And, and a lot of times they did. They were a great team, but we know Jordan and Pippen and then Rodman did their job. So you could see on nights where Pippen didn't show up, they would lose. Jordan showed up almost every night. I mean, even a game 23 points, it usually meant that he shot. He still shot uh, over 45 to 55%. It wasn't like he had... Uh, terrible nights. We'll get to one night he did have where it is on Jordan probably. But anyways, Barkley, 35. I don't know if that was his season high, but man, 35. He showed up that night, probably had the idea of saying, hey, I want to take it to Rodman. You know, they, they didn't, weren't the best of friends. And Kevin Johnson, remember Kevin J KJ? He had 20 points. So good performance by them. Suns, probably the highlight of their season as they finished 500, but they did beat Jordan and the Bulls. I wonder if that's something Barkley's ever tried to say. Hey, 72 and 10, one of those 10 is mine.